Baba Chakra and Buddhism are genuinely revealing of a higher insight into the mind and human existence. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of like a certain concentration of self prez You know, it's like all my baseline stuff has to be there or else, you know, animals are panicking. Or right, and it's like, yeah, it's, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Oh, the farm animals have gone crazy. <laughs> they, have, they haven't been fed at 5 p.m. All the animals have gone mad! <laughs> the big hormone egg. Hi, I'm John Lukovic, uh, sexual self prez over the five wing, four or five eight trifix. Hi, I'm David Gray, self prez sexual nine with one, nine seven four trifix. What up, it's Emika, I'm an eight wing seven, sexual self prez with eight five four fixes. Hi, I'm Nancy, I am a self prez social three wing four with a Six nine trifix. If you like our podcast, guys, make sure you go like and subscribe on the Apple Podcast app. And if you really like us, you should definitely leave us a review. I think for me, at least, doing these, like, I connected more than explicitly than I ever have the sense that these are the stackings or the hell. And mm -hmm. just the way that we, like, miss, like, our, our familiar hell, you know, that, like, like uh, the realm of humans or whatever is not what people would typically think of as hell. And right, but it is. And then I, I don't know. I think it might be interesting just to, I know that there's no concrete links that we know of, but that insight or intuition of w like the Buddhists coming up with this symbol is pretty amazing. It is like, like I wonder how to, I don't know. Like there's something there that I, I know we've, t we've tried to, flesh from that before but it feels so precise you know it actually does yeah you know i'm taking some slight liberties you might say with sure. how i'm doing these associations and i mean maybe even significant in some sense like if you look at the the axle of the wheel and talk about you know the pig being self prez snake sexuals rooster social um just it's it's never mentioning in Buddhist uh, scripture anything about the instincts. Um, but yeah, uh, it does seem like that's really what's happening here is that it is, it's almost, it's interesting because it's almost keeping it hidden uh, intentionally, maybe. You know, it's almost right, like right. Gurdjieff revealing the Enneagram and like he might have known that the Enneagram types were there. You know right. what I mean? It's almost exactly. it's something like that. Like it's supposed to stay hidden on one level. Oh, absolutely. Like these things, trans images transmit and symbols transmit, but like discursive knowledge gets corrupted and dogmatized. Yep. And um, yeah, I think I think there is something to it. I mean, you know, I would I really would like to do some like like stodgy library type of boring research into the origins because yeah. Um, I know that, like, Echazo claims that he put the any the instincts together with the Enneagram because of uh, Sufi psychology, mm -hmm. and he wasn't specific on what Sufi psychology and anything like that, but, you know, there is, um, there's, like, this Neoplatonic Northern Sufi connection, and there's this whole kind of Northern Sufism is seen as having a lot in common with Buddhism. Uh, mm -hmm. and you know, just like the kind of way like ideas could be distributed. Um, there could be like a genealogy there. I have been doing some of that here more recently because m one of the things, uh, it's actually a specific, I don't know, concept of, I've been talking about left and right and which one of these, uh, stackings are on the left and which are on the right and that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. anyway, I have been looking into actually finding the original Baba Chakra, which was supposedly, you know, painted or designed or written, um, not written, <laughs> illustrated by the Buddha himself. Mm. And partly 
I just wanted to know the detail of why, if there is a reason why some of the realms are sometimes on the right and sometimes they're on the left. There's mm. the one for the gods and hell <clears throat> are always center, uh, you know, upper and lower, and then the others the flip and but what occurred to me is that I think what could be happening is in the scripture itself, it might say something, it might even refer to the right or left side on a given realm. But sometimes what's meant by, for example, the right hand side might mean not the right hand when you're facing, but the right mm. hand as if you were in the symbol mm. looking back at us. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one reason why, like, if any of the listeners who've, you know, heard me refer to a certain realm slash stacking being on one side or the other, I think that is the issue, is that sometimes it's a matter of the perspective, and sometimes the artist may have flipped it to, mm. yeah, becoming from the, the symbol itself. Welcome to uh, the Big Hormone Enneagram. We are broadcasting from our weekly cuddle puddle. We have been doing the, uh, going through the instinctual stackings uh, based on David's intuition that the Buddhist Baba Chakra symbol is correlated or at least speaks to the instinctual stackings and their nature. Uh, the Baba Chakra is an ancient Buddhist symbol. Um, it is like a mandala with three animals in the center, pig, rooster, and snake. These represent uh, ignorance, attachment, and aversion. David intuitively linked them to the self pres sexual and social instincts. And around these animals are six hell realms of samsara, or realms of suffering, realms of illusion. Uh, their names are like animals, hungry ghosts, uh, humans, devas, gods, and I'm missing one. Hell or something. I think hell. And then, uh, anyway, so... We just did three episodes going through the stackings and talking about them from the point of view of this symbol. And now it's kind of just uh, reviewing and talking about it in general. And just leftover points that David wanted to make. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, before we get into it, uh, David's Trifix book, you can buy it on uh, Enneagram, Enneagram or Enne Enneagrammer.com and, um, you know, buy my book in anywhere. You can sell or buy books online, and uh, Emika and I will be um, on the Enneagram Global Summit coming up. I'm doing The Instincts with Mario Sakura. I did uh, Type 7, and I'll be recording Type 5, and Emika's doing Type 8. So be on the lookout for that. Anything else? Uh, Dark Arts. Dark Arts Academy. $19 a month. Enneagram.com. Emika and Nancy, did you find anything uh, interesting or different than, you know, anything strike you? Um, I think, you know, to his point about the positioning, if there's some significance to the positioning of the different stackings, I think one thing that struck me was just how, you know, the social stackings are up in the sky with sexual social mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. sexual self pres is um, down in the below the ground realm with the self press stackings. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's interesting to, to look at that in the way that we um, interact with people that have those stackings where and I'm wondering if uh, having someone who's on either side, how if that completes some kind of loop mm. where uh, if you've got self press going on or, you know, if you're self press dominant stacking or your sexual self press, if, if a good polarity for you is to have someone who's in the social stackings or sexual social, I've been thinking about that mm -hmm. or if there's any significance to the positions of the stackings on the Bob right. Shocker. Yeah, I mean, I spoke to this, but the fact that social self pres and sexual self pres are kind of opposites but connected or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot there that, you know, it might just be the excitement I have over my own relationship, but um, there is something, there's something there at least, at least in, in my relationship with Alexandra that seems active, but I don't know how relevant it is to everybody. So stepping back a little bit, one thing to mention um, about Buddhism in general is, and you know, some people know this, probably a lot of people do, but a lot of people don't, is that Buddhism 
is really not a religion. I mean, people have made it mm -hmm. into a religion with monks and so forth, and maybe even higher clergy and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it's really more of a like a philosophy of psychology. And I mentioned this to drive home the point that we ought to then run into some typological material, mm. something about personality types, in other words, uh, if the Bhava Chakra and Buddhism are genuinely revealing of a higher insight into the mind and human existence. Mm. So, so it makes sense to run into typological material. That's cool. uh, yeah, the whole symbol, I mean, we've been talking about it as hell and so forth. Well, the hell is the mind, mm -hmm. right? So that's, uh, and these are different um, ways that the mind kind of goes astray and, and gets, uh, and has a perspective that's so um, particular and kind of locked in that it uh you know it creates a hellishness because it's not seeing the whole one of the things that's in the symbol relative to the sexual social stacking and the social self pres is that most of the depictions show a tree that uh whose roots are in the social self pres realm and the, and it goes and it breaks into the sexual social realm so and and it's a fruit tree so the sexual social realm is getting the fruit and the social self pres realm is the solidity so you can see there there's a thing around like solidity of beliefs it's stuff we mentioned about the social self pres um sort of principles and building social order and that kind of thing that reaches up to the gods and then the gods get to feast on the fruits and the flowers and they're they're that fruit idea brings in the floral symbolism that comes up so often with sexual social so that's kind of fascinating there that it happens to mirror that piece uh one thing i wanted to say about uh the last pod is that i was emphasizing social sexual as we were comparing the two social realms, I was emphasizing social sexual a bit more only because when you look at the names of these realms and look up what they are typically described as in the standard kind of Buddhist scripture, it's less obvious why the social sexual and the human realm in the Bhava Chakra make sense together and so i spent more time to get that one more clear whereas if you look at the the buddhist text about that describes the social self pres realm which is called titans or demigods or asuras uh in the baba chakra it's much more apparent that it fits with social self pres so that i wanted to clarify that that that's why i spent some time on that one in the last pod um also, on the sexual, social uh, realm, the gods, goddesses realm, uh, just wanted to emphasize again, it's the pleasure and beauty side of the sexual instinct, uh, which recalls the pleasure aspect of the sexual instinct that you've referred to, John. Mm -hmm. um, beauty for beauty's sake. Mm -hmm. You know, the diamond and the floral qualities, these are universal symbols of love. We give flowers and diamonds as expressions of romantic attraction. And the public mating dance piece of the guy getting down on one knee as if his beloved is a goddess and they're in a beautiful restaurant. He offers a diamond ring or ring made from some kind of precious metal to represent eternal romantic union. Wow. Can you make it sound more romantic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting um, because, yeah, like, I think, and I think I would, I, I'm wondering if, Emika, you relate, but it sounds like, I imagine you relate to this, but that sexual self pres definitely has like a scarcity, like a self pres scarcity of attraction out mm, there. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, that's like been a lifelong thing of 
suffering is feeling like scarce, like love and attraction are scarce, and like mm -hmm. that uh, I have to hold on to it when I get it. Like when somebody's attracted to me or when somebody loves me, you know that like I'm often just I'm so rarely genuinely attracted to somebody. Um, you know, you'd think that a sexual type would be like, oh, that person, that person, that person, but like there's I'm so specific and uh, I'm so repelled by most people and that there, that it, it, it adds that sense of scarcity. And, uh, you know, the self pres body part of attraction um, is like, I find so few bodies attractive. And so uh, it just creates this, it generates a sense of scarcity, uh, whereas sex seems like sexual social has this like more of a overflowing or fullness or um, abundance of attraction and sort of willing to share. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking the reason for that is uh, we're not sexual self pres isn't factoring the beauty of personality or personality is a display uh, mechanism or attraction display as much mm -hmm. as we're not factoring that in as much as sexual social is. And I'm realizing that uh, social or really being, you know, having personality and these social hooks as an option for attraction just widens the net. Whereas right, right. self pres is kind of like you're locked into a form, which could right. be as simple as, you know, I like this certain body type, or I like somebody who's into the same kind of forms that I've locked onto. So mm -hmm. you're a lot more limited to like a self pres form of attraction. Whereas yes. sexual social is, they've got a lot more options because the the social realm or the the personality hooks are much more varied, and they're not as locked into like, oh, it's got to be this kind of face or this kind of body or, um, you know, for me, like attraction was kind of like a figuring out like what type of, um, physical expression or there's a certain type of face that I'm into, which is, you know, like very limited. <laughs> Whereas I don't think, um, you know, sexual social are locking into the sort of the physical forms of attraction as much, which is far less limited. Right. 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 And it's partly self pres is me and what I'm into, right? I mean, it's, you know, I, I kind of picture, uh, well, you guys have probably seen me do a, the equilateral triangle with sexual at the peak middle and then on the lower left and right you've got the lower left is self-pres the lower right is social and so sexual going into self-pres is like i mean self-pres is me the individual you know and what i'm into and all of this body stuff and social is is a much wider you know uh net of possibilities and it's multiplicity as opposed to singularity of self-pres mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. very singular and um yeah that was like it, it was funny cuz uh in some ways sexual social is the hardest for me to understand mm -hmm. and i think that's not uncommon like um like my tendency is to be prejudiced against self pres social mm -hmm. more than more than probably any other stacking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why i hate nancy so much my <laughs> nancy like nancy and i like to hate fuck <laughs> um, <laughs> metaphorically of course of course <laughs> of course of course <laughs> um yeah so uh i think it often goes that way because and that's the, that's the conflict between the two social types it's like you're doing social wrong mm -hmm. you know there's um that kind of thing yeah um i mean that's you can see uh social self preses get irritated with social sexuals like you're you know you're too loose and whatever uh, with all of this. Yeah. And it's, it's too pleasure, you know, pleasure focused and flippant and da, 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 da. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another thing, you know, we, we've mentioned with sexual social is the star symbolism that comes up a lot um, uh, in the collages by people that are sexual social. And it, um, and it's in some of the Baba Chakra depictions. And maybe this is reaching a little bit, but like the word that star, like for a famous person, right. um, 
is to me getting at an archetype that is sexual social like you know we imagine the the same way that devas uh god's goddesses realm in the baba chakra is described is exactly the same way we describe what we assume is going on for a famous person you mm -hmm. know it's it's riches it's um abundance of everything everything's just being given to you um you know and then the other piece here is uh, any famous person uh has a thousand times more romantic and sexual options mm -hmm. right so there's another way that it's sexual social is uh is is that kind of uh multiplicity of of romantic options famous people appear blessed like gods and goddesses uh and like in the bhava chakra symbol uh that realm is at the top of the world like a famous person is front and center which again is where the stars or celebrities reside well i i don't did i egypt blast about this uh on the sexual uh call no you did not we i don't think so remembered yeah <laughs> i definitely remember uh -huh. that so uh yeah I, this is kind of interesting and i i, I remembered it later but you know, everything in Egypt is based around the movement of the sun through the sky. And mm -hmm. um, there's this whole element at, like, basically around noon where Ra, the sun god, is, like, aging. And his, like, they say daughter, you know, like, they had daughter, sister, mother, uh, wife. Like, all, these were kind of just aspects of the feminine that weren't to be taken too literally or whatever. But his daughter's consort... Um, Sekhmet Hathor in her kind of like young maiden uh, energy is like what kind of keeps him going across the sky. Like he's getting like kind of worn out, mm -hmm. depleted. And there's something about, I can't remember exactly what it is, but there's something about her creative Aphrodite energy is like what keeps the creation in motion and, and, and keeps this, and keeps Ra's solar boat moving across the sky at noon. And it, there's, it's like, so it's sort of like this, it is like that sexual social energy is like it is. what what That's infused it. that to part of the sky in in the Egyptian cosmology, and that makes total sense, of course, because that's in Egypt. That's the gods goddesses realm, and there right. is that energy. Um, you know, it's like uh, like that old uh, theater. Uh, what do you call it? Play Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's that same energy of this attractive attracting you know kind of messiah energy that has this creative force to it that's compelling and attracts and it's again got that height just like it does in the bhava chakra symbol um that is you know everyone can see it and it's and you know the, it's made up of also of all the different constellations and astrological signs and so it's got that quality of ruling our lives you know in with the fate of the stars and mm -hmm. it connects into all of that stuff so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah there's a whole thing too of um you know the ancient egypt was very shamanic and in the pyramid texts the like earliest basically the holiest holy text we have in the world you know the the pharaoh ascends to the sky as Horus the hawk, and it goes to the solar. The hawk, you know, circles the solar realm. Mm -hmm. Like at noon, it looks like it's circling the sun, and uh, that like when the pharaoh ascends, he can look into the horizon, and the horizon from this like tall noon sort of vantage point, looking to the horizon. And the horizon is like the creative sexual, you know, mm. realm where uh, the sun is born. And part of the symbolism there is that, like, men typically didn't watch childbirth. And so, like, for the pharaoh huh. to ascend to this realm and to witness the birth uh, is, a, is a male energy peeking into a feminine hidden mystery. That's interesting. So <clears throat> the hawk is looking at the horizon at sunrise or sun, or is it sunset? Yeah, well, it's like, it... it's like the, the I mean... It, you go up to that realm, to that realm at like at sunrise, but it's like mm -hmm. really kind of like the 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 horizon at all times is kind of the creative area. It's called the Aket, and so it's about like going up, up, up to like you know where noon would be, like straight up, mm -hmm. 
and being able to look into the creative matrix, but maybe like at a different time of day or something. It's kind of interesting. It's yeah, no, there's solar sexual thing going on. Yes, yeah. Solar sexual is, I mean, because to me, the social instinct is rightly put on like point three on the Enneagram symbol. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's the sunrise, right? That's the mm-hmm. uh, breaking into uh, the day uh, that happens at that point, and it's kind of got a sexual uh, rulership there looking down from from the sky or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think that was actually it as far as all of my uh, odds and ends to clean up. Well, I guess we're done today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Points. I mean, there's a lot more to say just all around, but I mean, what do you wish? I mean, those for those people who've listened to the episodes as a sort of a recap, what what do you want people to take away from their understanding of the instincts through the from these connections with the Bhava Chakra? Like what's the I mean, overarching message? <clears throat> yeah. Well, when you combine uh I'm going to call it the fact that these are depicting the stackings with with the Buddhist idea that these are all hellish realms of the mind. Uh, it more clearly uh, articulates just how hellish type is in general, uh, whether that's Enneagram type or your stacking. And some of that is, you know, experiential as far as, uh, cause a lot of people don't have sort of a tonal sense of what the stackings are as realms or worlds uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. vibes. And so it's somewhat of an experiential journey, you know, uh, just like it is with any kind of type descriptions, you can, you know, there are good and bad descriptions and even the good ones aren't going to replace actual experiencing into what these worlds are like and why they even would be hellish because our tendency is to idealize certain ones of these worlds Mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And so uh, it's hard to imagine, uh, you know, for example, for a lot of people that say sexual social would be, um, something to not aspire to or to be or to have that life or something um and so on i wonder if it helps like also kind of relating to other people because like you know i've spoken to how alexander and i relate uh stacking wise but Mm -hmm. i was wondering like emica being being that beth is doing sexual wrong uh (laughs) like what's like how's does this provide context or guidance or something like that or help with that well okay so my experience with this whole idea um you know stemming from years ago um i was like oh cool idea Uh, but it i didn't it didn't really hit home for me until the collage exercise i was like whoa this is not just a fucking idea this is a real manifestation of the instincts and these realms do uh, illustrate something about the different ways that we're living and doing everything. And so, you know, some of the, I, I was wondering if a lot of these ideas that David came up with from the, from, you know, uh, making these connections with the Baba Chakra, if they had any real implications. So for example, the Contra versus Sinflow thing, which, um, you know, I didn't really see it at work until I started looking at people's collages and I started looking at the way people were living and seeing that there is a big difference between, um, like, for example, sexual self-pres and sexual social. The way that we're doing sexual is is very different. So, yeah, it's interesting, like, you know, comparing myself with Beth, you know, she's an attachment type and I'm, you know, triple hexad over here, but she touches a lot of different people and socially uh it's real touch and go but she doesn't seem to have much of uh, deep close connections with those people doesn't really have that many really intimate close friends 
as I do. Like, um, I take it for granted that I'm just going to have really, <laughs> you know, like best friends. Um, <laughs> and so I, it's, it's, I find that interesting. It's just a very different way of existing and different way of looking at connections. And also, also the way that we do attraction, you know, for her, there's, there's a much bigger public social piece to it. You know, how we look to, um, you know, even these connections that don't, aren't close or deep necessarily like there is a, a public mating display aspect of the way she looks at romance and it's very much it's just got a very social tone to it which can feel irritating sometimes you know you know, it's mm-hmm. just kinda, sure. kind of like why mm-hmm. why are we talking about you know this this so-and-so person and getting them involved <laughs> in our deal for me i could you know it's it's like i, I go public to find the mate but once i found the mate I, I don't need to talk or see anybody else about this ever again you know like it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just my thing yeah and it's it's interesting to see how all of my life is you know finding the partner is such a big aspect of my life and it drives a lot of my behaviors that once that part of my life is handled I, it just feels like oh these close connections are all that matter but outside of that i don't i don't fucking care about anybody you know just <laughs> <laughs> it's like i got my partner i got my close friends i got the shit that i'm doing everything mm-hmm. else is you know but for her like you know just continually connecting with people and public life and being involved with people that touch and go of you know just energy mixing with people is still a very important aspect of the way she exists so yeah it's it is, it does feel like, oh yeah, she's doing it wrong. But at the end of the day, we're still both sexual types and those needs are for forefront. It's just the way she goes about doing it sometimes is very counter to the way I would do it. But um, it is helpful in that it just, you know, pulls me out of my own cave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nancy, are you guys both uh, self social? Yeah, I think so. So what's it like being a beast? <laughs> What's it like being like together or I don't know, like do you do you get the the beast realm? Uh the realm of animals? Does that like seem to be a th- is there anything there in that description or model that s- speaks to something about the way you guys are together? The realm of Kaddish core. Uh, yeah, I mean it <laughs> it definitely um resonates because we both have if our basic needs aren't met we're a wreck so it can be very like i don't know anti-human almost because it's like we can't like stretch outside of that not having that like animal instinct met does that make Mm -hmm. sense i think so like it's it's like i feel like a lot of socials can kind of um go without yeah, I mean, it's sort of like a certain concentration of self pres You know, it's like all my baseline stuff has to be there or else, you know, animals are panicking. Or right, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. That image Thank is very uh, distinct. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. All the farm animals are going crazy. <laughs> they, have, they haven't been fed at 5 p.m. All the animals yeah. have gone mad. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, that's from Finding Nemo for all you people who don't watch kids' movies. Oh, yeah, um, of course. Finding Nemo, of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, John. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, it does, It you saying that does bring to mind... Um, this this fun thing that happens when like i'm gonna go super horse person here on you um this fun thing that happens when a horse gets like its foot stuck in something it like loses its ever loving mind and it will kill itself trying to get out of it um Mm -hmm. but you are standing there being like you are at literally in no harm like you were if we could just if you could just stand there for a second this would work but that, I mean, that's not how animals work. If they don't have that, if they don't feel like they have their needs met or if something's wrong, they will lose their mind trying to get it. They will kill themselves trying to get it. And uh, yeah. that's kind of how it feels being in the beast realm. <laughs> and that almost is a metaphor to the foot thing because it's that whole grounding. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got to have that baseline 
stuff underneath me met or else I might have to move on to other lands or or panic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Panic, yeah. Yeah, and there's so, nothing scarier than a horse panicky. Yeah. So I mean there's still self pres panic for self pres sexual, but like David, how how uh do you contrast that for from what you've seen with uh other you know self press types but that are self press social i don't know s p s x is so it's more of a continual <laughs> mind mind hell you know like even when things are relatively good as far as my self pres needs um i don't know there's for me, a quality of trying to churn up something that's going to be um, hellish or self-destructive or, um, you know, could lure me into danger or out of controlness or something, you know, it's, I've, I've got, it's got to sort of bleed into something or melt into something that uh, could be sort of a, a problem or, or, or even like a, a decadence, sort of an overindulgence, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Or it's almost like the quality of, uh, of the fruits uh, starting to, to be overripe, right? And then it turns into, starts turning, fermenting and turning into alcohol, right? And so then you're kind of bringing in that sort of inebriated aspect of, let's say, the sexual instinct and that sort of decadence and and that kind of thing uh so it's it's yeah it, there's much more of a i don't know just so much more directly connected to a kind of uh instant hellishness <laughs> kind yeah, of all I, the time yeah. i like when i'm picturing you know when i like see the impressions of self press social versus self press sexual it's like yeah there's self press panic but a different flavor of it whereas if you're looking at like self press social being like a, uh, an animal who doesn't have their needs met, and it's kind of like I've got to move and go change environments to go figure out a place I need to go to get what I need. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas self press sexual is kind of like a heroin addict who can't figure out when mm. they're gonna get the next fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's much more druggish and self indulgent and so forth. And here's another thing that's actually really interesting about the animal. Uh, association with self pres social and uh you know this is came up in uh, i think in some of your research john or whatever well it's also just basic stuff of just what we know about animals animals are actually not you know like when we say oh he's an animal you know as a <laughs> mm -hmm. as a as a uh, something out of disgust or whatever well we're more the animals than animals are animals just have a very short mating season where yep. sex and attraction are the thing so that's another way that self-pres social makes sense with animals is that the sexual instinct in a sense goes away most of the time mm. right mm. so that's another interesting symbol right there whereas yeah with self-pres sexual um you know, and especially this is like even with social sexual, the two sexual middles, it's kind of like you're wanting there to be sex and that kind of electricity of sex in everything. And that kind of ruins a lot of things, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, because it's, um, well, it's just, it's just not building anything. It's not, um, it's not useful it's not useful at all it's it's and it's it's so it's so indulgent in a certain way that um yeah it just creates a lot of needless often suffering actually this is interesting like think about cats and catnip yeah. dogs don't have an equivalent do they no no <laughs> i mean they like peanut butter but it's not to the level that cats like catnip now that's interesting like if cats represent self press sexual they actually have a thing a that represents a drug whereas dogs mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. or at and least the, the the things that we get dogs hooked on it's still pretty functional it's, like bones and it's a and food shit like that yeah 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 whereas catnip is straight up a drug <laughs> well and also just think about how cat imagery comes up around 
like Halloween and horror and stuff like that, right? So there's your hell connection as well. You know what I mean? There's this thing about cats that that's this mystery uh, that and there's they're used in a lot of like sexual imagery too. Exactly. Yeah, Catwoman and all that kind of stuff. Sex Panther. <clears throat> yep. Totally. Yeah. It's a, it, there's a certain sleek quality and agile that uh, agility or way of moving that's uh, and i mean looking at cats i mean they're 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 seducing you i mean they're winding around your ankles and their tail compare one of the things that's interesting is uh and this almost relates to the axle image of the snake as sexual is think about the two tails just the tails what cats are doing with their tail is much more sexual instinct. It's mm. and whereas a dog is just wag wag wag. You know, there's there's only a couple of things kind of that a dog does with its tail. It's sort of sexually non-expressive. Whereas the cat is kind of almost in its sleep, still doing a snake charmer dance or something. Yeah, I'm uh, I've been having a hard time concentrating on this call because Alexandra has a, a two cats and one of them just fucking loves me. Yeah, and and he his name's T'Challa because he's a totally black panther, and uh, uh -huh. but yeah, he like keeps getting on my lap and throwing his uh, tail in my face and mm -hmm. like walking on the keyboard and you know, just like <laughs> like yep. hello, yeah. give me attention, <laughs> you know, like it's just very obnoxious and uh, you know just like the like even purring, you know, it's like a vibrator, like this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's so yeah, like a yeah. dog. A dog will just jump on you and just, you know, roughhouse with you. But yeah. a cat's going to just, they're going to seduce you with their, you know, leers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At pur the purring thing, too. I mean, like, what in the fuck is that? It's some right. weird thing. And it's purely a, pre a pleasure signal, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or response. <laughs> yeah, he's driving me crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> So one thing that stuck out to me while we were talking about the socials is I, uh, like how up in the air they are and how detached they are from the ground. And um, the reason that stuck out to me is because when I am meditating or just doing anything spiritual, um, I will often feel like I detach from the ground and I'm floating and it freaks me the fuck out and I hate it. But that's how I know I'm like getting the goods. <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah. So I get in touch with like airy fairy quality. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. And I have to like get back down to the ground. Mm. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. It is interesting too, just to talk about the fact that uh, there is one of the non-social last stackings is in the nether world, which is door stacking, which is self pres social. So, um, but I mean, part of how I see that is, um, what would you say, the state of being an animal is uh, a certain kind of hell or constant state of vigilance in the sense that, you know, you're either looking for food or you could be the food. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a certain kind of continual attachment to the earth. And that's, um, uh, to, to earthly existence. And that's mm -hmm. why it makes sense that, that the self pres social is in the lower part of the symbol because animals are so, uh, sewn into, uh, earthly existence and instincts. Right. Yeah. If they if they weren't, they would all die very quickly. Yeah. yeah. You could say that all the stockings that are in the netherworld in some way are focused on consumption. Like even sexual self prez is one one mm. eat eat the romantic partner. Consumption. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Whereas yeah. the the ones up top um, true. You know, just like mm. high mind, like high minded ideals. So even sexual social is is taking attraction mm. and making it this sort of idealistic romance and mating symbol. Um, the sort of 
romantic displays, whereas uh, sexual self press can just be like the fucking hookup. You know, it's like you just hooked up and you're just fucking each other. Um, it's without the social, it's just a, a raw attraction um, that just keeps repeating itself. And so, yeah, it's interesting how like the, the social stackings and sexual social really take all that stuff and make it like a, an ideal or a symbol of some kind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing, too, that's and this is going way out into David Gray ecosystem world is, um, you know, I've got my the system of overlaps of uh, of the stackings put onto the hexad, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so uh, sexual self pres overlaps with four, uh, self pres sexual overlaps with five, self pres social overlaps with type eight. Oh, so so four, five, and eight are in the nether world. That's, That's the deep. The demon, the demon trifix, right there, <laughs> is in is in actually in makes up the entirety of the nether world, right? And that's really interesting. Yeah, it's cool. And then, so then the other stackings, you've got one, two, and seven. And so, one thing that's interesting about it is if you add uh, the four, five, and eight, that equals eight. If you add one, two, and seven, that equals 10, which you would reduce to one. So you have eight on the bottom, it makes up the bottom half, Ooh. and one makes up the top. Oh, so that, wow. And that means, and eight represents, you know, uh, chaos, <laughs> the devil and chaos, and one represents uh, God and order. Huh. So you've got chaos and order right there in the symbol. That's really interesting. It's wild. Damn. Yeah, it keeps going. There's there's more things like that, and it's just it's it just keeps pinging all of this stuff. That's just like wow. It it just seems like it's going to keep revealing more things. So do you all see in the in the collage exercises like I guess like where I'm going is all right. If if for example, sexual self pros in four like have a energetic quality that's similar or aesthetic quality uh and then like let's say you get somebody who is a social sexual four like Mm. five maybe would it be like i kind of imagine it almost like um mixing colors or something uh where you've got maybe like the the human realm of social sexual going on energy but then there's like a dip a flavor or percentage or portion of hungry ghost uh, aesthetic in mm-hmm. there too is it, yeah, the, yeah. is that how it works for y'all or experience yeah that? th- that's something i've noticed you know if you look at you're not like we have you're not we don't have very many four um collage examples but you know J- joseph being a social sexual four uh he, his it's really colorful there's there's you know famous people and cool interesting people but there is kind of like this self-destructive theme you know imagery going on mm-hmm. where you know i'm being ripped apart which you could say is similar to what the sexual self preses are doing um sexual self pres is kind of just uh really self-destructive imagery in the sense mm-hmm. that you know something is being transformed and the body is the fuel for that fire so things are being ripped apart or burnt or in transition um so i think that's that's interesting and you know for me being an eight, uh, so you know, eight overlaps itself for a social, and uh, I'm sexual self pres, but I also have got um, secondary five. So there is a heavy self pres theme in my images, and I think people, mm-hmm. pe- in general, if people look at sexual self pres collages, they tend to mistake them for some self pres lead stacking. But for me, it's even more pronounced where there is a heavy heaviness to my images so it it could come across like it's self-pres dominant generally generally the collages more than anything are just giving you the stacking for the very most part i mean you kind of have to just start with that but then you can once you get a sense of what that the tone and style of the stackings and how they come up 
uh, in the uh, collages aesthetically. Then you can do a little bit more um, sort of delving into some of the finer points like seeing trifix and four type mm -hmm. uh, based on uh, finer distinctions in what's happening with the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like even, oh. even this, it's, it's, we don't have a system for any of that because it's the stackings are very clear and, and anybody can pretty much learn how to recognize them on their own. But it is interesting that the centers do show up. Like if you were to group all the, the body center collages and then the head center collages and then the image center, for example, uh, I think we've gotten a couple of threes recently and just how much the self image is emphasized, like a lot of people posing. Or, or you get head types who, you know, like we've talked about how head types have like a kind of kinetic head energy. You literally see more heads in head type collages or even more activity where there's just, it seems busy, which is, you know, speaking to what the, uh, the activity of the head center. So um, if you're paying attention, you know, eventually you start to see how the different centers, and it makes sense that if you are looking at the world, that you are seeing it through the lens of your center, and it's going to yeah. be reflected in in your aesthetics. So are are y'all uh, compiling and like like keeping and categorized all the different collages you've had over the years? <laughs> of course not. Because <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm, I Joseph's mean, got a fair amount of that stuff done, doesn't he? I mean, um, I mean, people just started the uh, album in a group for the different stackings and I've been, uh, I, I have not organized these. I tried to at some point, but it's just, um, yeah, I, I don't have it, it organized. Cause I mean, this would be like a, another shocked. book. Oh yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Like sure. this would be like a very cool, you know, it, uh, it could be like a picture book. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying is like some kind of like coffee table style, something or other. And I mean, maybe not yeah. that big, but like that kind of level of quality and like, sure. You know, getting really specific about images and I mean, that would be you know, fucking you know, great. You know, it also becomes a test, mm, yeah. right? Yeah. If what you're attracted yeah. to, you're really going to zero in, especially if you've got many dozens of collages, you know, from all mm. different types and stackings right. and so forth. It yeah. could be even just a picture book in the, in the back. It could be like a, um, an answer key. Like mm. if you like this one, then you're there. Yeah. No, this is a really good idea. Just like an art book, but mm -hmm. also mixing in, you know, understanding of the different stackings and yeah, you could, you could so yeah, it'd be like a good teaching book, but well, also just you know, aesthetic. Well, it's like with David's Trifix guide, you know, just build from there. And like, I mean, like I was thinking after I wrote that intro, I haven't gotten back to look at your birth stories and stuff like that. But um, you know, there's all these different like David Gray fragments and. If we were to like just connect I could like I could easily just like connect some of them like with like yeah. I did with the intro. But if we had like like because uh, part of when I looked at the the birth stories is I was like I was gonna write something about it, but I was like, I need to see the like the larger thing this fits into. And mm. so like if you had a bunch of different like fragments and uh you know like had some things like these things organized and some thoughts about like the different trifix collages and all this kind of shit, you know, like the trifix booklet thing that you've got is like a great guide right it's like a great illustration of the energy and then you talk more about like you have the bhava chakra which is also very visual you go into all that shit and then you know like it's sort of like building it all and then you have like a whole bunch of pages of like uh collages and you just and you talk about what those are what they mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that'd be cool as fuck oh yeah especially since it is so visual i don't know that it requires a whole lot of text to me sure you know yeah it requires some guidance in how to like make sense of the imagery but apart from that like it wouldn't be like like my book or something like, right i think the the collage exercise for me anyway sort of acts as, as a bridge into like reality it's it's people could easily dismiss the bhava chakra insights as just like oh mm -hmm. some weird esoteric bullshit but um you know, they're like John's book gets into the sort of biological reality of the instincts and really makes some hard, hard line distinctions. And then the collage exercise is kind of like, for me, the bridge between these Baba Chakra instincts and just seeing, oh, wow, these, these uh, qualities of sensation and psychological boundaries are real and, and people and of these different stackings. And 
and these qualities of these realms actually exist as people mm-hmm. are just expressing themselves. And so, which means that these stackings are real and the way that people are living their lives and making moment to moment decisions are in line with, you know, um, like those qualities of sensations and psychological boundaries and it's all there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah, there's, there's something about, what you're speaking to like making it real or making it like just that there's this pattern that you can almost that you can just count on mm-hmm. that is like in a created object instead of just somebody self-evaluating or other evaluating you know it's like even though there's an evaluation that has to happen of the collage itself it's like there's something that gets produced consistently um that's pretty amazing and to be able to like articulate it in a real specific way i mean this episode if we're keeping all this stuff in uh, do a collage exercise on mm-hmm. Enneagram, com. Yeah, you might make it into our book. Yeah, you <laughs> might make it into the book. Uh, mm-hmm. But, it's, I mean, like, the this Baba Chakra shit that we're talking about, like, notice where you gravitate toward as you do this collage and what images grab your attention. And, and how, like, I was talking to somebody about their collage recently, and she was saying, yeah, I just this just felt like it needed to be here. And like, I saw that there was too much of this, but you know, there, she was talking about all these aesthetic choices she was making. And, um, it's just funny how automatic mm-hmm. those choices are, mm-hmm. how and automatic it, and, how, and how much it feels right or not. Just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. Cause I've tried to make, um, collages that are, that look more like, sexual and it, it's very it's still very obvious that i'm self press <laughs> yeah yeah that's <laughs> it's when people do like sometimes people on the in the group will like do uh yeah i try to be like all right these are all i'm gonna i'm a sexual self press type and i'm trying to make a social sexual collage and, mm-hmm. and yeah it's also pretty interesting that yeah. that like the first year uh when we unleashed this on any grand forums and people were making collages and and they would make their collage and be like, well, that's self press social. And be like, well, I don't think that collage I made, made represents me. So I'm going to make some more. And I'm like, dude, go make 20 okay. more. Like, it's, it's still gonna going to represent you. It's like it, it, people were just like having their heads explode, you know, at C1 yeah. well, because they weren't getting the types that they wanted. And they, and then the beauty of this thing is that if you are making the collage, it is your instincts. Like the fact that you're making it is you making instinctual decisions. Right. And you right. can't escape yep. that. And I was like, holy shit, this is what instincts are about. Like, this is it. <laughs> right. But yeah, I but... love that. I fucking love that people were <laughs> Oh, like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to make a few more because I don't think, you know, it's like the same way people make like videos and they're like, and they spent all that time making the video and then they feel like, you know like, what? Look the at video, how five I am. I'm so <laughs> after that they've been typed. They're like, you know what? That video that I made that you typed as a right. type that I don't, I don't. It doesn't represent me. Like, okay, don't make <laughs> ten other videos. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but John, I'm open to all kinds of that kind of collaborative stuff. Yeah, I mean, because I I want this, sh- this like this shit needs to come out and. Yeah. Uh, and yeah like i can kind of feel like i got really sick of writing because of my book and so i can kind of feel like there's a part of me that wants to get back into it Mm -hmm. um so yeah if like if you were to come up with kind of like outline or list of like just the basic david gray concepts or impressions or whatever that would go into a david gray book like that could be really that'd be your interesting starting point and that would be a lot easier for me to like um, sort of brainstorm about how it would go because I could sort of see like the oh, I could try to make an overall picture out of the pieces. Mm-hmm. I need to also show you where my book is at as far as outline because oh, I mean, yeah. I've got I've got you know whole sections and then chapters and then subheadings and then sub subheadings and I'm I've pulled out a lot of stuff but I want to show you where it's at at this point and maybe that's also something to ping off of yeah uh, but but at the same time we could also just do a separate collaborative thing that's maybe more visual or something like that that'd be cool yeah, yeah. yeah. alright I'll have you going okay. alright guys alright Bye. Later. Bye. i
my work and I miss this and I miss that. Birthdays for steps and gift wraps. Hope I don't miss my first dance.